Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this discovery session, A New Culture of Academic Integrity. My name is Emma Garten, and I am outgoing chair for the Originality Matters Task Force. And I'm very excited to share a little bit about our work and um, some things that you can do starting today to change your mindset and perhaps have a more effective uh, interaction uh, with your students around issues of academic integrity. So a little bit about our group. We are the Originality Matters Task Force. And this task force has been around for several years, founded by Michelle Warren of the College of Education. And uh, chairs this year have been me and Poppy Finch, who is um, Associate Vice President at Ashford. And I'm sure you've had correspondence from her in the past. And we are a very large task force. We have members from Bridgepoint staff, Ashford staff, Ashford faculty. We are definitely cross-departmental. We are across college, and we are a large and diverse group. In the last year, we got quite a bit accomplished, and hopefully you've seen and used the things that we have developed for you. That includes some Turnitin materials for students. Uh, both a student guide that is a comprehensive guide to reading and understanding a Turnitin report, and then the Turnitin student FAQ, which is a quick at a glance, this is why you should use Turnitin resource for students, and they are available in your class under course resources. So be sure to use them yourself and certainly direct students to them whenever necessary. We also updated the just-in-time video resources after the transition to Canvas. And we've developed a community of practice in the CEDL, where you can meet and talk with others, get resources, see other information. We launched the Teachable Moment Generator. We've been collaborating with Student Conduct Team as they've been updating and um, enhancing their interventions with students. And just like this discovery session, last year we presented to TLC, and we've been presenting to the colleges with regular intervals um, to make sure that faculty are always up to date. We continue to work on issues, problems, and projects as they arise. One big thing that happened and rolled out in July that we want to make sure you're aware of is this new part of the catalog focused on academic integrity. And this is a screenshot straight from the catalog, so you can find it yourself. Um, but we have actually defined what academic integrity is and developed some attributes and behaviors that students need to be able to exhibit, as well as anyone else affiliated with the university. We also are transitioning the Teachable Moment generating resources into Civitas, so you have a one-stop shop in your classroom for communicating with students anytime an issue arises. And you'll find those uh, resources arriving in your Nudge library, the Civitas IFF library in class. And the great news is now in Civitas, you're able to CC advisors. So we don't want to copy advisors on every email to every student, that would be overwhelming. But the advisors have um, really said that they are very interested in knowing when you reach out to a student because of an issue um, regarding particularly plagiarism, but any other sort of um, academic dishonesty situation. So when you are notifying a student that you found an issue, if you're providing a teachable moment to the student, and then that way the advisor knows that they've they've been through that process. And then certainly if you're identifying the student that you've taken action, such as using an incident report of academic dishonesty, an IROAD, um, to be submitted to the university for review, you can CC the advisor on that communication as well. Now you may be at other institutions or even in our history here at Ashford University thinking about um, these issues as academic dishonesty and plagiarism sort of at the forefront. And what we've been trying to do is adjust the culture, and we need your help, to go away from the focus on dishonesty and sort of the, the focus on blaming students and handing down punishments to actually taking a more holistic approach and a more effective approach in teaching students how to have integrity 
And that requires us to take steps to prevent issues before they happen, and then to help a student make corrections if something has occurred. So we have um, these bullet points now of attributes from the catalog, attributes and behaviors of academic integrity that we want to use to talk and work with our students. And the first one is the idea of original thought, which we've defined in the catalog as developing your own perspectives from careful analysis and synthesis of existing information. So the ways we can sort of prevent any problems in that area is to make sure we're always modeling critical thinking when we're interacting with students. I sometimes call it thinking out loud in the discussions, explaining where we got the information from um, so that students see how that is done. We also develop in-class activities that build analytical skills. I think most of the colleges, most of the programs are really interested in doing this and are doing a great job of um, revising curriculum to have more of this. And to also identify sticking points in the curriculum and then proactively communicating with students ahead of time. Maybe that's an email to the whole class at the beginning of a, leak, of a week when you know that there's a particular activity in class where students have a tendency to either just regurgitate something from the textbook instead of bringing in original thought or any other issue that happens. You know, it's going to be different with every class, and I don't want to pretend to be an expert in any other classes that I don't teach, um, but you know where those sticking points are. So maybe some outreach ahead of time before students get in that trap is all you need. And then when there is an issue, we want to make sure we provide extra resources to the student so that we can correct that behavior and get them back on the right foot. So there's a lot of information, literacy information in our Ashford library. In fact, when you go to the library, if you click on Library U, you see all kinds of beautiful resources for students. And then, of course, there's quite a bit in the Writing Center, and hopefully you're very comfortable with the materials your students need in the Writing Center. And then make sure when you're giving feedback, whether it's summative feedback on a discussion a student has done, or quiz feedback, perhaps, or marked up or summative feedback on an assignment and waypoint, make sure that you're composing feedback that tells the students what to do. Because maybe they've never done this before, maybe they've never been asked to use original thought before, and they need to not just know that they did something wrong, but now they need to know what to do that is right. So ensure that you're taking the time to pause, give that student your full attention, and help them figure out what to do and why, so that they're prepared to do that next time. The second attribute is academic voice. So that we have defined in the catalog is use, utilizing your own voice, spoken or written, while presenting ideas, facts, arguments, and conclusions that are supported by research. So one thing we all need to do is to model academic voice when appropriate. Now, if you're having a very spontaneous discussion in class and it doesn't need to be formal academic voice, by all means, there's no reason to force it and be more formal than you need to if it will get in the way of having a good discussion. However, other materials like instructor guidance, lecture notes, any shared examples that you use in class, make sure you are showing them academic voice so that students are getting exposed to it um, at every turn in every class. Think about developing in-class activities that require more reading and writing in academic voice if students are struggling here. Make sure that they are prepared. I think sometimes our students don't read as much as we would like them to, but sometimes if we offer up a very short or brief um, piece, maybe they are more likely to read it if the goal for that is to pick up on academic voice. They don't have to read 20 pages, sometimes two pages is all you need to start understanding what that looks like and sounds like, and then be able to do it themselves. And then ensure you're incorporating cited research in your instructional materials as well, so that students can see how you're integrating and um, bringing information together um, with your own voice. If you come across issues after the fact, again, providing extra resources is very important to the student. Um, there are quite a few in the Writing Center on academic voice, even drilled down to things like using active voice um, or using, um, you know, the grammar stuff is really great as well. But then also citing and using signaling verbs 
to let people know if someone else's voice is coming up. So those materials are in the Writing Center and we can direct students to them. Again, with feedback, show students what to do, not just a remark that they did something wrong. Well, where do they go from here? How do they fix it? And definitely offer examples of converting the student's words into academic voice. Don't be afraid to go ahead and make that and say, I think it would be better phrased like this. Give them the example. What do you think? Now, certainly you don't want to rewrite their whole paper for them. That's certainly not what we want to do in feedback. But perhaps on one particular instance and then encourage them to use that sort of model, that approach when they revise their work or write new work in the future. Next is careful attribution. And um, as we define in the catalog, that's following the rules of grammar and proper citation methods to accurately attribute words and information to the original source. So certainly the citation style um, is a piece of this, but grammar is as well because things like missing punctuation, missing quotation marks, inaccurate quotation marks, grammatical mistakes that make it unclear if this information is a personal opinion of the writer or if it's information from somewhere else, a citation that's not part of the sentence. All of these pieces go into making sure the attribution is clear. So this is something that um, students learn over time. So no one class can teach this to a student. Um, students come to Ashford from a variety of places, transfer students or new to college, and have different levels of expertise and understanding. So what we really need to do is to work on the preventative side, even if we feel like, well, my student's in a 300 level course, or even a graduate class, and they should know this. That's not necessarily the case. Um, may have been a while, things may have changed. So it's worthwhile that no matter what level of class we're teaching, from a first year undergrad course to a doctoral course, that we model the, those rules of grammar and proper citation methods um, when we're interacting with students, and that we take that extra step to make sure that we're modeling it and they're seeing it. We also need to insist that students use the proper writing guide. <coughs> Excuse me. Writing guides give me a cough. Probably you do. So right now, um, primarily we use APA as the style guide. And there's a full style guide in the Writing Center. Of course, it's not nearly as comprehensive as the full thing. Now remember, our students don't necessarily have a copy of this. So the APA guide resources that they have are in the Writing Center. If there's something more detailed, unique, odd that's not covered in the Writing Center, definitely let the Writing Center know that you need some help with that or you'd like a new resource. But in the meantime, there's other places you can direct students. If they have a copy of this, that's great. If not, you can help them see where they can get one if you think they need one. Most of the time, however, the free resource is online between our Writing Center and the official APA style blog online will give students everything that they need to know without an extra cost burden. Um, if you're not familiar with APA style blog, um, please check it out. It's from APA and it's moderated by the official authorities in the style guide. But remember, sometimes our students aren't using APA, so rather than focusing on APA, 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 make sure the skill that you're helping students understand is how to use a style guide, when to check and see how to do things, and how to use it as the resource. They don't have to memorize it, as no one does, um, but they do need to have the skill of knowing when to look something up and how to take that information and apply it to their work. Now, when there is an issue, we definitely want to continue that same um, tradition that I'm pointing out with each of these, which is to provide extra resources. Definitely try and link them to the specific part of the Writing Center that has that, that piece to it if you can. Or just go on over to APA Style Blog yourself. If it's something that's not in the Writing Center, use the search feature to find the link to the thing the student needs and um, provide that to them so they can see how to do it. Again, showing students what to do, rather than marking up a paper full of um, cross out marks and saying, this citation is wrong, this citation is wrong, this citation is wrong, this citation is wrong, highlighting this reference citation is wrong. That's not helpful. 
Um, what is helpful is to show them one time what it should look like and then invite them to, to do it correctly, again, either in a revision or in the next attempt. And then definitely refrain from editing student work. Okay, so editing is when we do those quick markups, right? We don't want to have a student overwhelmed with editing remarks about APA when they should be getting feedback from you on your area of expertise, on philosophy, on business management, on uh, early childhood education. That's where your efforts are most valuable. So rather than editing up a, a, a paper for APA, Again, point out, you know, we don't want to let it slide, let the student know they've got some issues in citation, uh, give them a model of what it should look like and the resources they need, and then don't continue to mark up the whole rest of the paper. There's no, no point in that. Just make sure the student knows there was an error and where to go from there. And then focus the rest of your time on actual content development for the course. Next, we have a biggie, which is personal responsibility. I think this is the one where faculty get the most frustrated. We need students to take ownership for their own educational activities and responsibility for the choices they make and the consequences. So consequences for academic dishonesty are not things that we are doing to pick on a student, right? We, we get so frustrated when they take that viewpoint. Um, it's actually a corrective or punitive action that is meant to stop a bad behavior from continuing and the choice to make that behavior is all on the student 100 percent so how can we prevent issues in this area well one thing that we definitely want to continue to do again from students from their first associate's degree course to their uh, you know capstone doctoral studies is to be frank with students and make sure that they understand what their role is in higher education. Remember, a lot of our students are at home alone or in the library alone going through this educational process. They may not have a study buddy. They may not know anyone who's been through it before. And you can be that, that link to them to make sure that they understand who and what and where they fit into this big picture. And personal responsibility gets developed through that. Make sure you definitely provide students with clear, appropriate expectations from the start of class. That can be in an email message to the whole class, in your announcements. It's great if you can do a video um, with students, a real brief, less than two minutes, introducing yourself that you're a real human and these are your expectations and help them see the relationship and how they fit into the class. Um, a quick video is always nice for making that connection early in class. And finally, remind students of the information and tools that Ashford is providing to them, um, including things like the catalog and like the Turnitin tool, but also there's Grammarly, there's also help from the Writing Center, um, from the tutors there. Um, there are so many tools and resources that Ashford is giving to students, so they don't have to fly blindly. So it's their responsibility to choose to use those resources. And it's our responsibility to make sure they know that that choice is available to them. So be sure to do that. Remember, students transfer in at any time. So we don't know that they've been through, oh, they should already know about Turnitin. They, this is their, you know, 20th class. Well, maybe not. It might just be their second class. So just always keep that in mind. And then when issues do come up, we want to make sure we don't let any situation, you know, slide. A student can't take personal responsibility if they're not aware that there was a problem. So our responsibility is to make sure that we address anything immediately whenever it happens. And that can be a teachable moment or it could be a full incident report, depends on the situation. Um, but one thing we can do to develop that sense of responsibility is if there's an issue and um, it's appropriate, we want to allow students to revise and resubmit their work. Um, possibly you want to ask them to complete some Writing Center tutorials or other learning activities first, and you're welcome to do that. And then that gives the, the responsibility to the student. They can make the choice to either keep that bad grade that they've earned because of an issue, or they can make the choice to take the responsibility to learn what from it to do whatever you have said they need to do and to redo the assignment. Part of personal responsibility, that doesn't have to be a burden on faculty. 
part of that personal responsibility is telling a student when it is done and resubmitted, you need to notify me. And then that way you don't have to keep checking in to Waypoint to see, I know resubmissions are hidden. You can't find them. So you'd have to go through and click repeatedly. There's no reason to do that. Part of personal responsibility, the student should need to notify you. And once you get that notification, you can, you can go retrieve it out of Waypoint, okay? And then finally, we want you to always report any blatant intentional act to the university for official review. If the whole paper has come from something like Course Hero, if the whole paper except the instructor's name, the date, and the student's name all matches some student from University of Phoenix, um, anything like that, if you are, if you've taken the time to double check and see what's going on, and it's clear that it's a blatant situation, a whole paragraph copied and pasted from Wikipedia, anything like that, please don't hesitate. Report those so that it's on the student's record so that we don't have students who are to their capstone and then we find out they've plagiarized all through their entire career and no one ever filed a report. So it's two issues on personal responsibility. One, we don't want to absolutely uh, punish and report a student who's just trying to learn and hasn't gotten there yet. But on the other side, we definitely want to report those incidents that need to be reported. Um, most of the time we live in the middle. Most of the time it's just there's something that we need to point out in waypoint feedback and say, oh, this matches another source too clearly. Here's how you paraphrase properly. Um, or gosh, it looks like you cited properly, but you forgot quotation marks. This is, you know, plagiarism now. All you need to do is make sure you get your quotation marks in there. The issue is just that it gets addressed each time and that we don't have things sliding. So whether it's just a quick note, a full teachable moment where a student needs to revise, or if it's being reported to the university for review, those are the things we need to do to help with the personal responsibility aspect. Now finally, continual improvement. This is an important part of academic integrity that I think sometimes we forget. Um, and in the catalog, we define this as accepting the reality that mistakes are learning opportunities and that errors can be fixed and behaviors can be changed. So we wanna discuss that whenever we can, um, that mistakes were a vision are part of education and workplace exercises, especially when we're trying something that's new and it's awkward and it's unfamiliar and it feels unnatural. Mistakes happen, um, but the point is, you know, when you point out a mistake to a student, even if it results in a zero grade, make sure you tell them, hey, there's still an assignment next week, and I have every faith and every expectation that it's gonna be better and that you're not gonna repeat this mistake again, um, and help students see that just because they made a big mistake and that there are consequences for it now doesn't mean that you know, the future is gone. and There's still plenty of space and time to improve and do better. And then, again with that, it's sometimes hard in this online format, especially in writing, but speaking to students with respect and understanding and refraining from anger or giving up on a student. Um, we just don't want to communicate those thoughts with a student. Most of the time it's easy to communicate with respect and understanding, and a lot of times students open up when we understand the underlying issue and we can work together to overcome it. Sometimes uh, things don't go real well and students are very challenging, to put it nicely. That happens from time to time. We still don't want to give up or get angry with the student, um, but we do still want to hold our expectations high and continue to communicate clearly and to understand that you know, it has nothing to do with us. All we want is for them to learn not to make the mistake again. So if we just focus on that as the goal, um, then really we can get through just about anything. So when it does happen, um, outreach through Civitas is a great idea if we can identify the specific thing that's going on. So if, we, if we've been giving feedback to a student each week and then we get to the end of class, and they didn't apply any of that feedback. They didn't take the time to improve. We gave them teachable moments. They didn't learn from it. So then it became blatant plagiarism because they didn't 
fix or correct or improve, um, we definitely want to communicate with the student and Civitas is a really good choice for that because, you know, it logs it there um, and we can offer suggestions. And if we feel the advisor needs to be looped in, we can do that as well, especially if our efforts have not been effective. So if you've been trying and providing teachable mo moments and not getting anywhere, um, maybe the advisor can. So don't be afraid to do that particularly at the end of class when they're now going to be on working with someone else in a different, a different instructor. And then finally, um, the one-on-one -on -one approach. So reaching out one-on-one -on -one to make sure that they're prepared to make different choices in the future. They may need a little mentoring moment and you can provide that to them. Um, it's probably one of the greatest things we can do um, as faculty is to mentor and help um, any student to make connections, you know, and, and bridge gaps and, and do better after they've left us, right? So that's something we definitely want to do whenever we can. So with all that in mind, how do we do these things? Well, first of all, is the catalog. So I have pulled up here on the web page. This is the language directly from the catalog. And again, these are all those definitions. You can access them here at any time. It also goes into academic dishonesty, which is, um, you know, the consequences part of the conversation. And a little bit more about plagiarism. So definitely take the time to get familiar and even maybe bookmark these pieces so that you know that you're using consistent language with students that their advisors are using, that the catalog uses, that prior instructors and future instructors are all using. So please do refer to that. Um, and as I said, get familiar. I wanted to show you in a classroom. This is just a, a master course shell. This is not a live classroom. But I did want to show you in any classroom where you can access those Turnitin resources for students um, and also use them yourself. They're pretty helpful. When you go to course resources and open that up. And this landing page right now is turn it in. So the um, FAQ frequently asked questions is a brief uh, PDF document. Talks about originality, what is turn it in. And again, this is sort of just the, the quick, quick and dirty, as they say. Um, help to um, students. So if, if they're asking you why I should use Turnitin, this is the document for them. Um, you can also just provide this at the beginning of class and say, I encourage you to use Turnitin. If you don't know what it is, here you go. It has links to um, the videos and the catalog and all sorts of information in here that students might need. The more comprehensive piece, and this is something I really would recommend that you provide to a student anytime there has been an issue in class from a teachable moment to a full iRoad incident report is to give them a copy of this guide as well. You can do it through just giving them the link in, through Canvas or download this PDF and attach it to your Waypoint feedback. So as you can see from the table of contents, there's a lot here and um, it's all clickable so you can jump to what you need. But what most students need here is understanding coincidental matches and significant matches and then what to do about those matches. So if it matches work submitted by another student, um, outside sources without quotation marks and or proper citation, incorrect paraphrasing, or the overuse of direct quotes, which is a big academic voice issue, right? Let's just click on that one. I'll show you the sort of thing it takes you to. So it takes you to um, explanation. If you, are, you have a large percentage of your paper is comprised of direct quotes, here's what you do to fix it. And it links to the writing center. And then, you know, again, all of these different um, sections show a student what to do to fix the issue before they use it again. And up here at the beginning, the reasons to use it. how to use it, including a screenshot. I know it's hard sometimes we don't have a student view, but here is the student view. You can see how a student can run a report and check it themselves. 
So I encourage you to um, share this with students, make sure that they know that it is available again in any classroom under course resources and here in the learning resources section. So hopefully that is very helpful to you. Finally, I wanna make sure you're aware of the CETL space for Originality Matters because we continue to do all of this work and we wanna make sure that you have access to it and are aware of things. So when you come to the CETL, you go over here to resources and click on more resources. As you scroll down, you'll find under Ashford resources, the link to the Originality Matters CETL page. And this is currently what it looks like. Again, things change, so it may look different by the time you get there. Of course, you can always bookmark this direct page or save this link somewhere for yourself if you don't wanna be clicking through the CETL all the time. Um, but it's always right here. So the vision of our task force is here. More information on academic voice, since that's a big focus that um, we're working on. We'll have a link to this presentation as well as information from other uh, TLC conferences is here. The Teachable Moment Generator in its original form is still here and available. As I mentioned though, those resources are moving into Civitas, but we'll keep this here for you. We have discussions. If you have anything that comes up and you'd like to chat with members of the task force or other faculty, please use that. And then this resources section is just about every document you may ever need, including some um, FAQs for you, the Turnitin resources I just showed you that are in the classroom, you can download them directly from here. Um, some announcements that are very helpful. We're launching a brand new announcement addressing some of those paper for sale um, sorts of websites that we'll put in here. And so you'll have that HTML that you can add if your students need that announcement. So keep an eye on this section. And then also resources for students. You'll find community members here, so you can reach out to any of us at any time. Again, um, you know, top uh, leaders and everything will be in here. And um, we can always be reached also with our new original, Originality Matters at ashford.edu website. So um, we have that inbox. If you want to email the, the group directly and you don't know who to reach, you can just email Originality Matters at ashford.edu, and we will be able to help you out and uh, get answers to any of your questions. So I hope that this has been a helpful um, session for you and that you feel charged and invigorated and that you feel ready to um, really help students with all of these things that they're responsible for and to maybe stop that idea of, of crime and punishment and to start working a little bit more on prevention and correction. Uh, if you have any questions, just let us know. We'll always be here to help. And we look forward to giving you more support and more information as the year goes by. It's been my pleasure this year to serve as a chair and I am sure that the uh, task force will continue to thrive in the coming years. Take care, everyone, and thank you very much.